How are your travels, Jennifer? Uh, pretty well, but two days of sitting is a long time to sit. <laughs> yeah. Your, um, whatever that Arkansas, like, is that like a state park or what was it? That was, like, the, that was amazing. It's called Garvin Woodland Gardens. It's in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And we've been there before about six years ago. And we knew we had to go back because it's just the most amazing botanic garden thing. They've got this, and I didn't even share all the photos. I mean, in addition to this amazing treehouse thing, they have this like glass woodland church. Like the whole thing is like glass and wood and it's, yeah, it's beautiful. I'll have to share some more pictures. So yeah, it looks cool. And I'd never heard of it. So yeah, check it out. We're in the hot springs area. It's, it's one of the things you should do. So, all right. Welcome, friends. If you don't know, Kim works with me at Simple Scrapper as my teaching assistant. She is a passionate memory keeper, just like all of you. She was a member before she worked with me. <laughs> and if you are new to the Your Way workshops, I'm going to wait just a minute here to let folks come on, but I'm going to pop in the chat box the link to our agenda for tonight. This is the Better Photography your way workshop and what's going to happen here is I'm going to divide you into conversational breakout groups to tackle some questions about your photography journey what you want to learn how things are going for you uh, and yeah just explore and then we'll come together at the very end to share our lessons learned um, maybe to kick things off here if you could find the chat box and to just share um, one fun thing that you are have done or planning to do this summer, and if it is not summer where you live, uh, a fun thing that you plan to do this winter. Camping and beach, awesome. We are. It is raining a lot here, but we're hoping to get to the beach. Uh, going to Mackinac Island, yay, I love Mackinac Island. Park City, Utah. Oh, Natalie's super serious. She's gonna do Lone 721 Mini, mini with um, her friends. Becky is gonna go to a local theater production. Oh, I love Mamma Mia. That's such a fun summer show. Visiting Grand Portage, Michigan. Sequest in Fort Worth. Oh, fun taking weekend trips in our RV. Just arrived home today from the mountains. Oh, it's so fun. Okay. So as Kim inferred, I, I'm not in my usual location. You can tell I'm in a Coca-Cola museum. This is my parents' game room, my childhood home. Uh, we're here seeing them for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic. And we drove 16 hours to get here over two days. And we'll be here until next week. So if you uh, partake of our other activities in the coming days, our refresh retreat, you will see similar locations around the childhood home. So it'll be fun. All right, I'm going to pop the link in the chat box again for our agenda tonight. My link works. There we go. For those who are just joining us, we're going to jump right in here. A couple of reminders I want to share with you is I want you to share generously of your experiences. I'm going to break you into small groups of three to five fellow participants. We have a diverse group of different creative backgrounds, experiences, different locations um, with children, without children, with children who've flown the nest, um, all different life stages and experiences. Uh, different types of scrapbooking, digital paper, have done both, you know, trying to figure it out, do photo books, pocket pages, everything above. So just keep an open mind to everything that you're hearing while sharing honestly and genuinely from your experiences as a memory keeper as well. And that's what really we can, that's what this is about. This is from learning from one another. And the small group conversations are not being recorded. So at the very end, um, we'll come back together, and this is technically being recorded now, but I only 
post the very end. Uh, at the very end, we will uh, have this large group discussion and that's when you can share your takeaways. So you can distill down, are there something that you shared or something that you heard from someone else? What is one thing that you want to try? What is one thing you want to learn more about? What was a kind of an interesting thing that you never thought about in that particular way? So I want you to be keeping that in mind for that wrap up session at the end because that's when I'll ask you to unmute yourself and just jump in and share. And that's where the really the good stuff gets shared. Okay. So to review our questions for tonight, we've got, uh, what do you enjoy about taking pictures and what frustrates you about it? What do you want to learn or better understand about taking photos? And what are some of the best trips and tips and tricks that you've learned about photography? So I think it's going to be a really juicy discussion, lots of, I mean, we know there's lots of challenges with learning how to use our devices, um, whether it's a, a phone or a big camera, mirrorless cameras versus DSLR, so lots and lots of questions there, you know, all the, ex <laughs> the additional accoutrement, lenses and accessories, it can get pretty techy quick but feel free to just jump in at whatever comfort zone and comfort level that you have because we have as i said a range of interests and experiences here and we're all going to see what we can learn from one another all right let me break you into your rooms and then we can jump into this let's see we want to do six rooms here and we're going to talk for 10 minutes so the rooms will close automatically after uh, they'll give you a one minute warning after nine minutes and then you'll have one more minute to um, wrap up your discussion and then we will come back all together. And with that, do we have any questions before we do the first round? Okay, I will send you off and I will pop in the little notification box your question again, but that uh, agenda is also in the chat box if you haven't grabbed that yet. All right, I will see you in 10 minutes, friends. All right, terrific. Welcome back. Did it go well? I hope so. Lots of great ideas, conversations, things to try. Uh, a little bit of direction, maybe, of what you want to work on in the weeks and months to come. Uh, before we get into our wrap-up discussion, I want to remind you to start thinking about what are your big takeaways from the three discussions you just had. But first, I want to share a little bit peek at our latest issue of Spark Magazine. I love to do that at the um, these sessions that occur at the beginning of a new creative journey. So we are just starting the Photos Creative Journey lasting through July and August. And things kick off with a new issue of Spark or Member Magazine. And then tomorrow we have our next refresh retreat. This is a four day virtual retreat for our members. And uh, Etienne Rickles is kicking things off tomorrow night with a very special keynote presentation talking all about her photography projects and that will be recorded. So the beginning of the journey, there's lots of uh, juicy things to dive into. And I'd love for you to consider being a member but let me pique your interest a little more with this latest issue of Spark Magazine. I'm just gonna scroll through a couple of our pages here. So this is one of our feature articles on uh, 10 ways to start organizing your photos. And I'm just so proud of this publication. It is more than a hundred ad-free pages and we're doing six issues a year right now. Uh, bringing you these double issues has been one of the best decisions we've made because we can put that much more in every single issue, make sure it's extra special, and just give you that much more variety of inspiration. Uh, we have two different featured artists for each issue. This one we have Jen Wong, um, a pocket page scrapbooker, and Neftali Zambrano, who is a 12 by 12, very colorful, floral, and feminine uh, 12 by 12 scrapbooker. So very different styles and approaches, and we've got uh, brand new sketches and templates inspired by Jen's pages, and then a really fun creative challenge inspired by Nephi's pages. So this issue, as always, our creative team just outdid themselves with so many beautiful pages, uh, digital hybrid paper examples, 
Uh, you can see uh, all of those sketches inside of our creative resource libraries in the membership, in addition to in these issues of Spark Magazine. So I, if you're not familiar with this, this is one of our very best features. This is issue number 88. We've been doing this for a long time. I'm, you know, I'm very proud to that we've kind of refined the process. And while continuing to make each issue better, I really feel like we know what we're doing and we want to give you a really top-notch publication every time. So thank you for obliging me this little mini tour of about half the issue here. And I hope that if you are not yet a member, you will consider joining us. Uh, this creative journey is going to have much more to come. Uh, we're kicking things off with kind of this creative reset at the beginning of July. And then in August, we'll be diving into the next session of Photo Crush. So Photo Crush is one of our longtime events. It's a seven day opportunity to fall back in love with your photo library. And for this session, we are releasing our Photo Crush 2.0 102 class. So last year we released a brand new 101 class and this was an opportunity to protect your future. And so I, I like to talk about photo, photo management in two ways. One, you need to make sure that you are ready for the next photo you're gonna take. And those lessons are actually already available in a self-paced format inside of our community. And then what we are going to release in August is the organize the past uh, level of sessions. This is the next phase. Once you've protected the future, you can organize the past. And this is where you dig into all of the backlog of stuff, whether it's digital photos, or in my example here, I'll see if I can show you this. Over there in the corner behind all this stuff is more stuff. And there's about eight boxes of photos from my grandparents. And so I'm gonna be kind of documenting some of this process for that new class to show you how I would take, you know, here's all the stuff, what do we do with it? How do we inventory it? How do we start? Uh, digitizing it and make decisions about what gets digitized. And so those are the types of things we're going to be talking about in the Photo Crush 102 session. And so I hope I will see you for that in August. And with that, let's continue talking about photography, taking better photos. What do you want to learn? What have you already learned? Who wants to go first? Melinda, go ahead. Um, so Betty Lou actually shared something with uh, our group that just clicked in my brain. And it was that, you know, when she, she did six years or so of a um, daily photo habit mm -hmm. and that made taking pictures less precious. So if it worked it, great, if it didn't work fine, and I think that she said that that sort of freed her up to try new things and to get creative. And I think that was, that sort of like really sparked. And uh, might well, I'm not necessarily going to start a daily practice. It might be better to to start thinking about it less precious and just just go out there and take pictures. Yes, awesome. Did you I love say it. sixty years of a daily photo habit. Six. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought 60 was a little, little much, <laughs> thank you. Betty Lou, did you want to clarify further? <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it, it was closer to six years, not 60, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I took a lot of pictures when I was a kid, but, but you know, not every day. That was back when you had film. Um, and. I think it just having to take something and having someone else taking a picture on the same prompt every day was inspiring. Well, that's a perfect segue because tomorrow night, and I, and I think I mentioned this, but Etienne's going to specifically talk about photography projects like photo a day and other things where you, you pick more of a theme and you're, you're capturing things along with theme over time. And she's gonna talk about her experience and how that has improved her photography, made her feel more confident, help her meet fellow people who are interested, you know, runs the gamut of benefits. And I think she'll, she'll kind of sell that to you tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Of what Perfect. you can get from it. So, or if you wanna get re-inspired to do a photo a day project, then, then I think that's what, what she's gonna be offering. 
All right. Other other light bulb moments for tonight. Or are we just gonna watch this cat? Because I could just watch a little kitty all night long. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. <laughs> I had an idea and I've kind of gone on ad nauseum about um, my photo taking habit or lack thereof. But I feel like it has gotten better because apparently making like public declarations about something makes you improve them. Uh, but one of like my favorite, like best tips and tricks were, I loved all like the different photo composition things, right? Like rule of threes or framing or leading lines. Like there's all those different kind of like names for like how you would compose your photo. Um, and what I liked about it is you didn't need different equipment. You didn't need to spend extra time editing. It's just when you took the photo, you had to like think of it. Um, mm -hmm. So it kind of occurred to me if I would get a list of all those different photo composition things, like maybe... I don't know, in like a week or a month or something, I could make it a game to try to take pictures that fulfill each of those different composition suggestions, styles or whatever. Because um, well, apparently I have to you, keep it entertaining. You can make a bingo game. Yeah. There you go. And even if they're not like exciting photos, you're practicing it so that those uh, techniques become not things that you need to do, but things that you just naturally do as part mm -hmm. of your process. Well, and I think also it kind of comes back to the first question about how what you enjoy about taking photos. And I think my group in general kind of agreed that it helps make us more observant and like notice the world around us a little bit more. And I think um, it just would be like a new way of like looking at the world around me it would help me see that um, in like a different perspective. So that's something I had not thought of before tonight. So I'm excited to try it. All right, other thoughts? One thing we talked about in one of the breakouts um, that is probably not quite in the spirit of the photography journey, um, but the idea of being okay, like if you're okay with your current process, not feeling like you have to one up it, so to speak. So like, for, for example, I am not a great photographer. It's not the part of memory keeping that I particularly love. Um, like, I don't want to be thinking about all the technical parts of photography while I'm trying to be in the moment and capture the moment at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about a little bit about just, you know, if you're happy with the process you have, not necessarily feeling like you need to take a class and learn X, Y, and Z if what you've got is working for you. Yes, 100%. I mean, I think with whether we're talking about photography or page composition, any part of your whole creative process. You know, if you, if that part is working well, if you're enjoying it, if you find you're finding flow with it, if it supports the rest of your hobby, then, then don't focus on improving that. Focus on improving the parts that are frustrating to you or are not working as well. Thanks, Debbie. I love that. Debbie, that makes me think my second group with Annette and Kim and iPhone and Benny, we talked about the concept of like taking a photo for like the photography sake of it, like you know, like you said, all the technical aspects of it are taking it for like a memory keeping aspect. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's like dark and crappy, but like, I really want to remember this moment or have it like captured. So I think it's a matter of like knowing what your expectations are, but also maybe what your intent is. And sometimes it all matches up and it all works out great. And then sometimes um, you kind of get what you get. And you yeah. don't drop it. But um, I guess knowing what you're wanting to get out of it makes sense too. Because the special moments don't always have the best lighting, you know. <laughs> Schools. Why don't somebody, a photographer needs to be involved in like school design. Because sometimes not so hot, but. Yeah. Doesn't stop the mothers in law from commenting, you didn't buy the school package again this year. And it's like, I take better pictures. Sorry. I just driving. order them, Natalie. I order them the pictures that I take. Like they don't, there's no comment made. Mm -hmm. Just keep them to their house. I love it. All right. I wanted to share my little tip. It's more of a technical tip, but something that um, we didn't know how to do. And so guess what? We could Google it and find out. And it's something that has plagued us for about two years now. And that was on our old Samsung phones. We could do burst mode by just pressing on the shutter button. Well, that turns it into a video now. And so we figured out, I'm gonna try to show you guys this. Uh, see if we can get it to focus on something. Um, the button, what do I want to focus on? 
if you swipe the button, can I do it? Nope. You swipe the button. And do you see how the button is now clear? You swipe the button, that will take a burst. And it took like, let me see. This one took like 13 of the 40. I'm sorry, I took 48. <laughs> so it's like a little mini swipe of the button is what does burst mode now. So if you are missing your burst mode and didn't know that or didn't even know burst mode was a thing, this is when it takes tons of photos in succession, uh, you want to swipe the little button. Now, I have no idea how to do that on an iPhone, but I find this really ha handy for action shots. So like my daughter's like jumping off the boat into the lake and I want to get like the perfect splash shot or her jumping, uh, you know, my finger doesn't always press the button at the right time, but burst mode gets all the shots from start to finish. And then you pick the one you want and delete the rest. So I am now excited that my husband finally Googled this and we know how to do it now. All right, other fun tips that you guys learned tonight or want to share? Jennifer, thanks for that tip. That's awesome. I'm going to try it when we get finished here. Yay. Awesome, Beth. Perfect. So the way to do that in an iPhone is to just hold the, the shutter button, just hold okay. it. Right. And, um, and then usually like the part that I used to struggle with was how can I see all the burst pictures? Cause the, the iPhone will pull up what they consider the best. But if you have like an action shot where you're like you said, your daughter's jumping off a boat or you want to get some part of it, it does do better if you press and hold for that whole action. And then, um, you know, you can go through the burst of pictures and find the one you like the best. Mm -hmm. I don't know about iPhone 11. Somebody just put that in. My iPhone's a little bit older, um, but in the older versions, that's how that works. I just, I just was trying burst on my iPhone and it's not working the way it used to work either. Um, but this is the first time I've noticed that I'm getting videos also. So they must've changed that with a recent upgrade. I don't know the answer yet, but consistent. I'll figure it out. <laughs> what? Can you I thought it was a fix in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do because the I was getting thing? burst for everything. Mm -hmm. Can, Can you, you do burst for swipe? Does the swipe? I don't know. I, I tried swiping and I didn't get that yet, okay. but I'm sure if you just Google, how do I do burst on? I'm that sure. Software. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I was just going to do. Yeah. But there is a change. Well, well that's so the real tip an, is go ahead, Bernadette. I was going to say, if you've got an um, Apple watch and you take a photo, you use your um, watch as your shutter, it will do a burst. Oh. Ah, yeah, that's right. Also, if you use your timer and you like, if you switch it to selfie, but you want to take a group picture, you go prop it up and set the timer. It automatically gives you a burst and then you can go through and choose which one you like the best. Fun. All right. So many different options here. And so we all know little part, all we all know little parts together. We have a really smart brain. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just told that swiping to the left on an iPhone like 11 or later is what does burst mode. You press the shutter. Okay. Like you, press, you press the shutter and then you swipe left. Do I need that? Does that I, work? Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> there we go. All right. We figured it out. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Well, you know, I'm just glad that they're similar. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't write this down, but the last group, someone shared with me that the Epson 400 has a creative print app or part of it that allows you to make collages instead of using, for example, Project Life. So I'm going to look into that. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. I have tried, I did install the Canon app for my big Canon and um, I had mixed success. Like it worked some of the time, but it did not work consistently for printing directly from my phone to my printer. So I just typically print from my computer to my printer. Um, but there are lots of apps these days that help you 
not only get the photos printed from your phone, but to uh, do things with them on the way as well. Didn't you also use a Canon app like as a remote shutter? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I use that with my Canon M50. And so it's the Canon Camera Connect app. Um, and so, yeah, I actually brought my tripod with me and I forgot my camera battery. But thank you, Amazon. Uh, I delivered one the next day. So I ordered it in the car on the way here and it was here when we arrived. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, because I have a dummy battery now that plugs in and I unplugged it and then forgot to put the real battery back in. So, oops. Oh, well, now I have spares. But yeah, the intent will be to use that remote shutter so that we can take a family portrait. Alrighty, other tips for tonight? Other ideas or lessons learned, things you want to take away? I have a very basic tip, but it's yeah. one that a lot of people with phones in particular overlook, which is clean your lens before you take a photo. Yes. <laughs> I actually did that on my webcam because I'm like, ooh, this is really bad. And I knew it wasn't great, but this is really bad. And so it turned out my webcam was uh, also pretty smudgy. So any kind of lens, whether it's your phone, your webcam, fingerprints make a difference. <laughs> Thanks, <What>? Bernadette. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. All right, we do this every single month. I hope to see you back next month where we'll be talking more on the photo organization side as I lead up to that photo crush session. And again, if you are interested in, in diving into photos, do a little experimenting. One of our activities and refresh actually relates to Kim's comment about um, using different perspectives and trying to see things differently as a way of experimentation and seeing uh, how you can see things differently. That's one of our activities. And so I hope to see you inside the community if you are not yet a member. Um, we got a link here in the chat from Betty Lou. If you wanna grab that real quick on how to take photos in burst mode on your iPhone. And if, of course, if you wanna share at any time in the community, you can do that as well. Uh, that's one of the best things I love about it is just all the, the links and tips and fun ideas that we share each and every day um, between our members. All right, I hope you guys have a great night and I will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.